the most popular languages learned on Duolingo. So in the blue, we have English, which it looks like most of the continent is focused on English. But of course, the places that speak English either as a first language or a second language, a lot of the Nordic countries are taught like English as a side language in school. They're actually learning Spanish. I get why the UK would want to learn Spanish. I mean, they have like Gibraltar and isn't this like their favorite vacation spot? They love taking little getaways to Iberia. But a little confused about Denmark, Norway, and Finland wanting to learn Spanish. Is that also their favorite getaway? But what's even crazier though is in Sweden, they're actually learning Swedish the most. How could that be possible? Now I'm gonna assume that's because there's a lot of people in Sweden that don't necessarily know Swedish. Maybe they're just visiting the country or maybe they've just moved to the country. So they are trying to adopt the native tongue. That's just amazing to see something like that though. Finally, all these Baltic nations, they're all learning German. So I'm assuming just a lot of these places want to move to Germany one day. They're practicing up before they go. Or maybe that's like a requirement for them to like move to Germany. They need to be knowing like some of the language. I like how they snuck this in here. There's like also people trying to learn Spanish here too. The world's population concentrated. If the world's 7.9 billion people lived in one city, how large would that city be if if it was as dense as first Paris. So in Paris, which is a pretty dense city, I thought 54,000 people per square mile, a city containing the world's population or like 8 billion people would span across Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas. The same thing for San Francisco, which not quite as dense, would span across Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and all of Texas. Texas is a pretty big place. New York's population density would be able to perfectly fit the world inside of Texas. That sounds very confusing, but for some reason, it's not that confusing. Then there's London, Singapore, and then Houston. Houston is like our fourth or fifth biggest cities in the States, but apparently they're not densely packed in together very much. That must be pretty sprawled out here over the coast of Gulf of Mexico. Global annual gaming console unit sales. We're starting off in 2002, a time when PS2 dominated. It had just released. Slowly watch Xbox though. PS1's still around, just the PS2 is just killing it. PS2 is like the, one of the best selling consoles of all time, I think. GameCube sitting pretty safely here in 10% until the Wii comes out in 2007. Oh, that's gonna start to really pop off. Xbox and PS3 really start to cut into the PS2, which I'm sure Sony doesn't mind that. Both their property. Damn, this looks like pretty perfectly split in like the 2011, 2012 range. But Sony starts to take over. There was a small little bit of other. Look at PS2 still around in 2014. Oh, Oh, and then there it goes. Wii U is going to struggle here. We have the Xbox One. Okay, now things are going to get interesting once the Switch gets introduced. Looking at it like this, it really shows just how much PlayStation has kind of dominated. Oh, well, actually, the Switch is starting to eat away at that. The Xbox One and the Xbox Series X kind of just chilling. They've been flying under the radar for like a while now. Actually, even getting a little smaller in the market. I didn't realize the Switch was doing that well. Nintendo with another big old hit. What percentage of the world is asleep or awake as the day progresses? So there is a moment I know for sure where most of the world is awake, at least on average. Like where the Earth is like perfectly facing the sun and like all the Pacific Ocean is at the back. Not that many people are living on the Pacific Ocean. I don't know if you knew that. The problem is Pretty soon, very quickly, a lot of the population, yeah, like once China, India, Japan, like all of Asia goes to sleep, boom, that's 60% right there. That's gonna continue to dip. Here goes Europe and then all of Africa. We're almost at a perfect 50%. There's a point where like China, Korea, Japan are all awake, including all of the Western Hemisphere. And then slowly, not much is gonna change when it's nighttime. Wow. When almost the entire Western Hemisphere is asleep, there's still 90% of the world awake. I never really thought about it like that in terms of percentages. Okay, you gotta admit, this one is pretty dumb, but firework injury per year. Hmm, I wonder. Oh, would you look at that? Throughout most of the year, it's pretty low until July 4th. Who would have thunk? But I think this graph is specifically trying to show like a certain year where like things got kind of wild. What's interesting about 2017 is that more of the injuries took place before July 4th. Maybe July 4th took place on like a Monday that year, so everyone celebrated it on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, it was on a Tuesday, so yeah, that does make sense. I think that's definitely the biggest factor why like certain spikes certain years are crazier than others. Like there wasn't much going on in 2016. That was a pretty chill July 4th. Not too many people with like broken limbs. 2020 people went wild though, and there's actually a lot of injuries after July 4th. Can't wait for us to get the 2021 data. Of course, fireworks are also a big deal during New Year's. For some reason, in 2019, things got crazy. There were a lot of injuries during those months leading up and after. How do you even get this data, though? That's what I'm wondering. Which country is the closest when in Italy? So if you go visit Italy, surprisingly, your nearest neighbor is going to be drastically different depending on the region you're in. And this mainly has to do with all those little micro city-states inside of Europe, one of them being San Marino. So let's just say you're in these two Italian cities, and for some reason, the entire 
Empire nation of Italy has decided, hey, tonight we're gonna do the purge. You gotta get out of here if you don't wanna be involved in that. The best place to go to would be here. If you're in Venice, go to Croatia. Obviously in the north, you'll wanna either go to Austria, Switzerland, or France. The closest country to this part of Italy is Tunisia? That's kinda weird, cause yeah, Malta's like a little island right there. This is a little confusing just because I think the curvature of the globe really affects this a lot. What parts of the world are closer to Georgia or Georgia? So obviously if you're in the Western Hemisphere, it's highly likely, almost a guarantee, you're gonna be closer to the state of Georgia, not the country. Greenland is pretty divided, but there's like literally nobody that lives here. If you are for some reason in Greenland, you're probably like here, so it's probably the state of Georgia. And then almost everywhere else in the Eastern Hemisphere, you're gonna be closer to the country. It does get kind of confusing for these islands though. I don't know if there are any major Georgia fans in like a place like Tonga. Tonga, I'm pretty sure, is famous for having Georgia stands everywhere. They don't care the state or the country, they just love Georgia's. They're actually gonna have to go to the state first, they're slightly closer, but I'm sure it's not by much. I don't even know why this is necessary, but I still enjoyed this. Front page newspaper headline of Alaska being voted in as the 49th state. Apparently they also felt the need to diss Texas at the same time, calling Texas a shrimp. This is all the way back July 1st, 1958. I think, it's a little blurry. Yeah, that's right. Whatever happened to Mirror News? I've never heard of that thing before. But it seems like most people's focus is over here on the flags on the left because they're trying to figure out how they're gonna do the 49 star flag It's crazy how similar some of these are to even like flags of today like revisions for the USA flag Oh, man, could you imagine how tacky that'd be could you imagine 49 stars in the alignment of USA? Oh my god, we'd be like the cheap Walmart flag of the world I don't think this one's too bad bunch of stars within a giant star and then this like non-aligned one pretty popular still the median age of residents from US states and the biggest one that catches everyone's eye is probably Florida. I knew there's a lot of old people down there. A lot of old people and crackheads. On average, they are 42 years old, which is up there with some of the oldest. West Virginia is older, but it looks like Maine is actually the oldest. Almost 45. I don't know there's that many old people in Maine. What are the old people doing up there? They also like to go and retire to Hawaii, apparently. They're pushing a median age of 40. But on the opposite end of the scale, some of the states with some of the most young people, is Utah. Probably because they're just having a bunch of kids over there, right? Really pulling down that average. It's easy when you have like 16, 8 year olds running around in one family. How willing are certain citizens in helping other countries in a crisis? So in terms of the German population, the German people are most willing to help Austria and they are least willing to help the United Kingdom. Seems like there's kind of a grudge there. They have had quite the history. Very similar thing in France, but France is much less likely to help in terms of if one of their neighbors got into a war. Like look at all the green that Germans have. France definitely does not reciprocate that feeling. Oh, look, the British are definitely willing to help the Irish. That's a first. And for some reason, they don't like Lithuania, though. I mean, it's still overall a positive, so that's nice. Why Lithuania? What, what do the Brits have against Lithuania? How the tables have turned. Italy's not huge fans of the Germans. Making them pay debt or something. I'm sure that has something to do with it. Finland don't look like they like anybody. Finland's only helping their buddy Estonia and maybe Sweden. Love seeing, like, a smaller country like Romania come to the aid of a lot of others. Romania's a true friend. Hey, look at the Dutch. Dutch don't care at all about like the Balkans, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania. Spain's doing better than I thought. I mean, they're helping a lot of Mediterranean nations though. Yeah, uh, there seems to be a lot of bitterness towards the British, it looks like in, in Europe. Portugal's population distribution, if only 100 people live there. And unsurprisingly, it looks like most Portuguese live right off the coast, specifically in this province, but there's a lot in the north too. Not much by Spain, it looks like. The relationship between like Portugal and Spain has been like fascinating. The fact that they've been somewhat cordial all these years. And yeah, there's not really a whole lot of Portuguese out here on these islands. Probably not a lot of room to live out there. What information are you driving around? I guess like by looking at your bumper stickers, you can find out a lot about a person. This is like GeoGuessr, but for stalkers and only using a car. I don't know why that reference needed to be said right there, but I'm, I'm just saying. So by putting like your son or daughter's little event thing they do after school, it's basically telling some creeper, let me introduce you to our children because they're involved in extracurriculars. We'll be gone most evenings and or weekday. <laughs> <laughs> weekday nights, whatever, weekends, I guess that's true. When you have something like an activity you like to do, like this is how we roll, be like expensive toys that you can probably find in our garage. With this one, clearly there's an animal inside the house, but he ain't gonna be able to do shit. This is where we work or live. I already know, yep, there's this school one. Everyone has these school ones. It is weird too, like what is the point? No one cares if your kid's on a roll, I'm sorry. Oh, personalized license plates are actually easier to recall. Oh yeah, and also way easier to keep track of since 
it's not just like a random bunch of numbers. My spouse is away for an extended period of time. Oh, never thought about that one. We'll have our hands full and distracted when we go anywhere, making us easy targets. This is, I don't even know. I guess this is interesting. Well, I, I think just don't put 20 bumper stickers on your car and you're gonna be okay. One or two, probably fine though. How to tell a raven from a crow. We have the common raven versus the American crow. They have long, fancy throat feathers versus smooth throat feathers. I didn't even know there was really a difference. And how are you really going to be able to tell when it's like flying like that? I guess this is the best way. Wedge-shaped tail versus a fan-shaped tail. That is so similar. Like, there's no way it's close enough for you to be really tell the difference. I guess maybe kind of. Croaks versus caws. Oh my god, the common raven does regular barrel rolls. This one does much less barrel rolls. Wow, how unepic. How dare you call yourself an American? It's so random. I don't even know why I needed this information, but I guess thanks. I've seen the world version of this. This time we have just the continent of Europe. All land is initially divided so that each piece belongs to the closest city with at least 10,000 inhabitants. So the biggest thing that I learned is that, I mean, the bigger population cities are probably going to make it to the end. It's like a little battle royale, so like it's kind of randomly chosen. I Dang it, I wish I would have made that prediction. I would have said Paris. No one's going to believe me now though. Oh, but this one's going to be spanning across multiple games. You can also keep up with the top 10 list here. It's like once cities eating a bigger city's neighbor what about Moscow? You think that would win? Turin. Wow, would have never guessed that. Moscow's got to win one. Come on. Maybe this is it. Nope, it's Brussels. Should have known. There's not a whole lot of population out here. Maybe London eventually? Istanbul. They got it. There it is. And for the final game, I mean, it's easy for me to, yeah, okay. It's easy for me to look at the top four and just make a random guess. That's not impressive me, like, predicting who wins that one. Spinner top world where each latitude of the globe is... I guess thickened depending on its population within it. Like obviously this part is gonna have the most population. These latitude lines are crossing over through China and India. And obviously there's not a whole lot of people living down here. So that's why it's like the smallest. It's like a, I don't know, you ever seen Inception? That's what this is. Spin the world, figure out if you're dreaming or not. Where certain crops are grown the most in the US, I find the ones that like are only grown in one state the most interesting, like artichokes. Only California is doing artichokes? Is that why we had like a weird artichoke depression there for a second? Oh look, they only make blackberries, the phone in Oregon. Are blackberries even around anymore? But yeah, okay, uh, that's that was just a joke. Celery is growing in California, and then for some reason, Michigan. Seems like two really random spots to be growing celery. Like, I guess I get cauliflower, California, and Arizona. Okay, they're right next to each other. But, like, the states that are growing the crops in two completely different climates, that's a little weird. Oh, yeah, this is definitely corn. That is corn paradise right there. That's all I know these states for, actually, especially Nebraska. Oranges are grown in California, Texas, and Florida. I thought Florida was, like, the most known for oranges, but I guess not. Peanuts exclusively come from the south except for Louisiana. Did they ban peanuts there or something? Did they just hate peanuts? Then there's like squash which is so random. It looks like you need water like access to the ocean or something or Great Lakes. I'm not sure if that's the case but that's the only thing I can see in common with these. This is where soy boys are grown. This is where I was born actually. Wheat which is just like about everywhere. Is that like the most popular crop? Wheat or corn? California out here actually doing a lot. And big thanks to the July patrons. Abolish Wyoming 2021. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Aryan after hours. I'm back Lol, 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 lol. Yo, 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 yo. Luxembourg. Mine number. Brothers 99. Poppy X2, Drew. Woo. Patrick C. Popcorn 2008. Beer T. Stormtrooper 501. Zephy. Kaylee K. Epi. Full Elijah Nick. Senpai. Alfonso M. Barnes, 6 Aaron F. Dalton Aaron D. F.